On Sunday, there was an incident in Berkeley, California, in which two men asked two other men that were harassing a pair of women to stop harassing them, and then they got attacked by the harassers. According to a statement from the UC Berkeley police, the two men and two women were walking separately when the two men then began harassing the women. The two men then approached, asked the other men to stop, and then were beaten. And luckily, the harassers were arrested. This incident is known as street harassment, and it's extraordinarily prevalent. Don't live and lie. This is your one lie. So what exactly is street harassment? There's not really an official definition out there since this problem has only recently begun to be recognized by society as a problem. But it's basically some sort of unwanted behavior that is gender-based and that happens out in public. This can mean catcalling, name-calling, unwanted touching or groping, or hollering at someone in the street or from a car. Now I say that this behavior is gender-based for two reasons. A, because street harassment happens to women almost exclusively. B, the comments and behavior are based in sexism. It's one thing to tell a woman that she looks nice, but to yell across the street that a woman has big juicy tits you'd like to fuck is quite another. Street harassment happens way too often. It's estimated through research that about 80% of women will experience street harassment in their lifetime. But one of the very first studies ever conducted on street harassment in Indianapolis found that of the 293 women that they interviewed, 100% reported experiencing street harassment. In 2000, a phone poll was conducted in the United States featuring 612 women and they found that 90% had experienced street harassment in a rural area, 88% in the suburbs, and 87% in urban cities. And this problem doesn't just exist in the United States, it exists worldwide. In Japan, street harassment got so bad in trains that they had to create two separate systems one for men and one for women. Now this is a perfect example of how women are the ones that are expected to change their behaviors to stop street harassers. Women are then the ones being inconvenienced by something like this and they're not getting to the problem of the male harassers. And this idea relates to the idea that women are expected to change their behaviors to avoid being raped or sexually assaulted. In that same phone survey, 84% of women said that they had changed or modified their behavior to avoid potential street harassment in the future. Society is clearly blaming the victims of street harassment for the harassment. And this is such bullshit. When in any other case do we as a society expect the victims of crime to try and prevent the crimes that were committed against them from happening? Never. It's all based on our sexist and misogynistic ideas that we hold about women. Don't dress slutty or you're asking for it. Don't stay out late alone or you might get raped. Don't go too far or you'll need them on. All of these attitudes that we hold about women and sexuality need to end or else we will never stop street harassment. Next week, there will be a part two to this story in which we'll talk a little bit more in depth about victim blaming, also busting some myths, and giving you the tools to go out and end street harassment.